this video, I show you how to control reflections on glasses. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. In this video, I'm going to be making use of these sunglasses. In fact, any sort of glasses. They can all give reflections which you may or probably may not want in your picture. And I'm going to show you how you can reduce and remove reflections in camera. So how's it done? Well, there's two things you need to consider when you think about reflections. First is the position of your light source. And we'll cover that in just a minute. Second is the size of the light source. Think about it. The bigger the light source you're using relative to your subject, the bigger the reflection you're going to see. So it's worth using a light source that's big enough to do the job, but no bigger. I'm gonna do a head and shoulders shot in just a minute, and for that I need, well, a soft box of this size. This is the 26 inch rapid box from Westcott. It's perfect for a head shot and no bigger than I actually need. Finally, of course, you, you could always remove reflections in Photoshop, and I'm gonna have a look at Photoshop in just a minute, but I'm actually gonna add a reflection in, and I'll get to that in just a bit. Okay, that's enough for now. Let's break this down, let's get our model, and let's get going. So to help me out today, I've enlisted the help of Brian. Do you wanna say hello? Hello. And he's looking very cool in his cool dude aviators. And this is the sort of thing that's gonna give you the reflections on your glasses. Dark sunglasses are always gonna reflect more than, say, clear glasses, because they are darker. Now, how you position your light is gonna make a massive difference. So let's start with perhaps the, the wrong position. I'm gonna put the light in front of Brian and we'll see how that goes. So with the light right in front of Brian's face, this is very similar to on-camera flash. Now, I'm not gonna use on-camera flash. This is a Streaklight 360 inside of a Westcott Rapid Box. And I just need a meter for this, so I've got my flash meter. I'll pop it underneath Brian's chin, pointing back towards the flash. And in this case, I'm getting a meter reading of f2.8. That's fine. The final picture I've got in mind has a shallow depth of field, so f2.8 is what I will dial into the camera. Let's take a shot. Yeah, and sure enough, that light is, well, exactly where you'd expect it to be. It's slap bang in the middle of the glasses. That's a classic example of having the light in the wrong place. So where do you put this light if you want to get rid of reflections? Well, one thing is to think about the direction of light. With direction of light, light goes in straight lines. So if the light's coming forward, it's going to hit the glasses and bounce straight back into the camera, and you're going to see it. So with that in mind, if I move the light, I'll move the position of the reflection. So let's move the light over to the side. Okay, so we'll bring it round to about 45 degrees. Now I haven't changed the distance between the flash and Brian, so the power of the light is exactly the same. I can keep the same settings. Let's take a shot. Here we go. And as you can see, the position of the reflection has moved. It's now right over to the side, and it's still there, we can still see it, but it's clearly not in the same place. So in that in mind, in theory then, if I move the light even further round, the reflection will go even further round. So let's go right to the side. We'll come right to the, the 90 degree side of things, something like that, and we'll take the shot. So I've got rid of the reflection, but at some cost to the picture. Yeah, there's no reflection in the sunglasses anymore, but what I do have is one side of Brian's face is bright and the other is very dark indeed. So how can you remove reflections and keep a nicely lit face? Well, you've got to change the position of the light once again. So let's move it once more. So I'm going to bring the light back round to the, the 45 degree position, but rather than having it at the same height as Brian, I'm going to raise it up. So we're going to put it much higher. I need to angle the light down a little bit, of course. There we go. So once again, you have to think about light going in straight lines. So now the light's going to come from above, hit the glasses, and reflect down. So if I'm shooting from the middle, that should mean I miss a lot of the reflection. Let's have a go. Yep, 
And there you go, it's almost gone. There's a little hint of reflection at the top, but it's very, very small. So to completely get rid of it, if I elevate the light just a little bit higher, so we go a little bit higher up, that should do the job. That should remove the reflection, but because the distance is now a little bit greater than it was before, I've got a re-meter. So let's just re-meter for that. So I'm getting an exposure of f2.2, so I need to increase the brightness of the light to get back to f2.8. There we go. Back to f2.8, let's take the shot. So there we go, we have a great lit shot with no reflections in the sunglasses, and that is exactly what I'm after with some lovely lighting on Brian's face. So we've got the lights in place, and now all we need to do is a shoot. And for that, we need a little bit of a prop. So what have you got there, Brian? Bunch of cards. Yeah, we're gonna do a little themed shoot with some cards. In the next video, we're gonna take this theme even further. But for now, we're gonna take some shots of the cards, and then in Photoshop, we'll add the reflection back into the sunglasses. So we've removed unwanted reflections. We're gonna create our own. Okay, Brian, are you ready? Yeah. Let's do it, here we go. Okay. One last shot to do, and it's just a picture of the cards. I don't need Brian for this, but I do need a bit of knowledge of the inverse square law. Now, the inverse square law says that if you have an object very close to a light source, its fall off of light is very rapid. And in theory, my background should go nice and black. Now, if you've never come across the inverse square law before, have a look at the Adorama Learning Center. Loads of information there. And there you go, the background is beautifully black, all ready for Photoshop. Speaking of Photoshop, let's go into Photoshop and do a bit of editing right now. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest and your chance to win amazing prizes. Well, it might seem crazy to go to all that trouble removing the reflections in camera, only to add in some reflections in Photoshop. And although normally reflections are not something you want in glasses, Sometimes they can really add to the picture. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add in a reflection that I'm controlling. Let's have a look. So here's the shot that we wanna add the reflections in. No reflections in the glasses. Think of it as a blank canvas. So I wanna get the shot of the playing cards, select and all, edit and copy, and we can just paste them in with edit and paste. Now there was a reason I wanted that nice pure black background, and it's for this very reason, if I change the blending mode from normal and I choose screen, anything that's pure black becomes transparent. And now it's like I've cut the cards out. Look, they just sort of float. Uh, and that just saves a little bit of time. They are, however, a bit on the big side. So let's use a bit of free transform and we'll just shrink these down, holding shift as I go so they say, stay roughly the right kind of size. And we'll just come in here. And I reckon probably a bit smaller still. I'm not trying to get them so they're the same size as the glasses because that's not quite how reflections work. So I reckon about there looks good. I'll click on the tick. Now that's fine for one side, but we need some reflections on the other side as well. So let's go to layer and duplicate layer. And then we can just move this across. So I've got two identical versions. And again, I'll use a bit of free transform just to add a little bit of difference between the two versions. I'm not going for an out and out reality here. Uh, real reflections have all sorts of other little nuances. Uh, they'd be flipped over for a start. I'm just going for the, the hint of a reflection. This is a stylized reflection. Okay, so I've got the reflections in the glasses, but at the moment they don't look quite right. There's a little bit more work to do just to add in a sense of realism. And most of it is revolving around selections. So let's start by switching off those layers coming down to our background layer and I'll grab the magic wand tool, just click inside the glasses. That makes a rough selection, that's fine. Rough for this case is fine. I'll refine that a little bit by smoothing it and feathering it and clicking OK. So let's switch on the layer that has the cards for that lens and I'll come down to the layer mask button at the bottom of the layers panel, click on that and that'll mask them off. 
see there's a bit of extra here. So we'll just get the paintbrush and we'll paint that away because we don't want that showing. Okay, so what are we gonna do now? Well, simply change the opacity and drop it down quite low just so there's a hint of reflection in that lens. There we go, something like that. If it looks right, it is right. Okay, let's do the other eye, same thing again. We get the magic wand tool, make a rough selection over the lens. We'll refine the edge on that one by smoothing it and feathering it, clicking OK. Switch on the layer, make it active, put a layer mask on and drop the opacity. Now in this case, I've actually missed a bit. So again, this is why I like using layer masks because if you miss a bit, you just paint with the opposite color, which is white, and it reveals it once again. There you go. Uh, we'll just drop the opacity down. And we'll, again, we'll keep it fairly low, but not so low that you can't see it. Okay, that looks good. Last thing to do is just put a little bit of softness into there. So I'll make sure I'm working on the layer and not the mask. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And we'll just blur these up just a few pixels. And the same the other side, because real reflections would be a little bit softer, most likely. So let's just use the same one again. There we go. And there you go. There is our picture without reflections, but magically with a reflection, completed. Well, the idea of the cards really worked out well, and I think we're gonna take this even further. So in the next video, I'm gonna reuse these cards, and we're gonna take this to a whole nother level with a few more lights. Now, if you wanna see that, and of course, any of the other videos by the other amazing presenters here on Adorama TV, you know what you've gotta do. You've gotta be clicking on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey, thanks for watching. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.